Bulaginaka, my name is Lucia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, tropical cyclone alert now in force for parts of Fiji. Former PWD staff sentenced for corruption charges. And salvage of Southern Phoenix delayed. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Tropical cyclone alert is now in force for Lao, the Lomaiviti group, Vanua Levu, Taviuni, and the nearby smaller islands. Category 1 tropical cyclone Ella continues to intensify as it moves towards the Fiji group this evening. Akusi Fatale has more. On this side, we have a uh, tropical cyclone Ella, which is, uh, which is at the moment a very concern, uh, tropical cyclone for us. TC Ella is moving westward at a speed of almost 8 kilometers per hour and expected to enter into the low waters through Vanombalavu from tomorrow night into Friday, bringing with it heavy rain, strong and damaging winds. The wind close to the center is now around 45 knots. With this westward movement, we expect as it uh, comes uh, maybe in the next uh, 6 to 12 hours, we expect uh, it to dip uh, south uh, west, southwestward. Uh, and that's uh, towards uh, Vanombalavu, and uh, this will directly affect uh, the Lao group as well as uh, those up in Vanolevu and Tavili. Mecca says heavy rain followed by strong and gusty winds in these areas are expected to begin tonight into tomorrow. However, these winds are expected to increase to damaging and destructive from tomorrow night. The rest of the Fiji group is also expected to encounter this if TC Ella moves through Fiji. It's a category one system at the moment and we expect it to, to, to pick up, uh, to intensify into a category two system. And uh, though it's not, uh, it's not really a huge system, uh, but if the center comes close to any of the islands, we will expect uh, uh, destructive winds uh, over those areas. Showers are expected to increase to rain and become frequent and heavy with thunderstorms from tomorrow. Akusi Tatale, FBC News. We now cross to Akusi Tatale, who joins us live from Nandi. Akusita, FBC News understands this cyclone has come into existence outside the official tropical cyclone season in the Pacific, which ended last month. Can you tell us, is this normal? Yes, Jackie, this is just a late boom which can be expected at times and according to the Fiji Met Office, this was caused by a tropical wave which had come into the region during Cyclone Donna, which is still in the region but is weakening. The atmosphere was also favorable for the two cyclones to form. Jackie, if a tropical cyclone had to form during the off-season, it would most likely develop during May or October than any other month of the season. This would most likely to occur in the Coral Sea, uh, with most affecting land in some way. The most recent off-season storm is Tropical Cyclone Ella, which was formed yesterday and is currently active. Um, Fiji has had a total of six tropical cyclones and depression uh, during the off-season since 1970. Jackie. Thanks so much for that update, Akusita. It's business as usual for the Northern Division today, despite the cyclone warning and alert in place. Schools were open and operations were normal for businesses in the Lombasa community. There was no rain or strong winds recorded at all, with the sun glaring down on the Babasinga town. There has been no rain at all and only sunshine for Nambawalu, Taviuni and Sabusabu, although it's been a bit windy in Bua. We now cross live to Eleanor Terangai View in Lambasa. Eleanor, what's the response of the public to the alert that is now in place? Jackie, there was an interesting response from the public here today. Most of the people we spoke to in Lambasa say they are not aware of a cyclone approaching or even that a cyclone alert is in place. I guess it's because of the beautiful weather we had here in Lambasa today and even tonight there's, uh, the moon is out and even the stars are out. And I have here with me the Commissioner Northern, uh, Mr. Chovesa Wodea, to speak on the operational side of things. Uh, Mr. Wodea, how is uh, the sorry is the north emergency operations center now activated yes uh, we have already activated our operation center 
both at uh, the district, the provincial uh, uh, operations uh, centers, as well as our divisional. We are gathering information from the ground through our provincial administrators, and we are passing it on to our national uh, the system management office in Suva. We, we, we've set out our, our, our preparation, and the uh, people on the ground uh, know what to do in uh, times like this. Uh, they've been contacting uh, the Turangani Koros, the advisory councillors, those who were not able to, to get the information through the media, uh, we were able to, 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 to get the information through the mechanism that we have through the provincial council, the Turani Koros and the advisory councils. And uh, as I was uh, saying earlier about how people are not even aware of a cyclone approaching, just your advice in this regard. Yeah, I think uh, most of the people were, were not aware. Uh, as you've said, El Noah, that uh, the weather was really fine for the last few days and that we have gone past the cyclone uh, season from uh, November to April. Uh, but I'm advising the public in the north that uh, the cyclone is uh, coming our path. Uh, please be prepared, please uh, be alert, and make sure that uh, you have all uh, the equipment, uh, prepare everything, your radio, your lights, and the clothes. Uh, for those who are still staying in uh, tents, please uh, move to the nearest uh, evacuation center. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vodea, and we will bring more updates uh, uh, throughout the week as uh, they come to hand. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Eleanor. Six former employees of the Public Works Department and a businessman who were involved in a scam seven years ago have been sentenced from four years to ten years imprisonment. They were convicted of abuse of office, causing a loss and obtaining financial advantage. Pranita Prakash reports. During the trial, which ran for a month, the court heard the six former employees caused a loss of $362,944 to PWD. The High Court says the convicted persons abused their responsibility and conducted the offences without any remorse. Anna Langere has been sentenced to 10 years imprisonment with a non-parole period of 8 years. Amelia Vunisa, Vadiseva Langai and Vasiti Tuitavuki have been sentenced to 8 years imprisonment with a non-parole period of 6 years. Laisa Halafi has been sentenced to 9 years and 11 months imprisonment with a non-parole period of 7 years and 11 months. Kini Vilyame Taviraki has been sentenced to 6 years imprisonment with a non-parole period of 4 years, while businessman Shelby Narayan has been sentenced to 4 years imprisonment with a non-parole period of 3 years. The former employees facilitated the processing of false payments to be made to three companies, namely on-time stationery supplies, Chevrolet stationery supplies and Phoenix Hardware Engineering and Supplies Limited, which was owned by Narayan. According to the evidence produced, 101 transactions were made to three companies with 60 checks. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The salvage of the southern Phoenix that submerged in the Suva Harbour has been delayed with the need for specialised equipment. FBC News understands the equipment is expected to arrive in the country by next week before the salvage company Ardent can begin to remove the ship's oils and pollutants on board. Reportedly, there is around 183 metric tonnes of heavy oil fuel on board the cargo ship. The Maritime Safety Authority has confirmed that a 24-hour surveillance in and around the vessel remains in place with the weather forecast now being monitored regularly in light of the impending cyclone Ella. The ship was carrying 179 cargo containers aboard bound for Tarawa and Christmas Island when it sank. Still to come, over $10 million paid out for first home buyers. And music festival promises excitement. Details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Langunga, and the Moala Rada Ranadika, or Tikungana Town is singer Toka, and the Talitaka and Avarong and Bula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. We are the Rasu Bunikurna Billy, Borani Batskara and Barabin and Rana, the Talitakin and Avarong and Bula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. Bula Bula FM, numbered the way in a serve.
Fiji will join over 200 nations in Germany next week to lay the foundation for a more ambitious climate action for the future. Chief negotiator for the Fijian COP23 presidency, Ambassador Nazat Shamim Khan, says Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama will deliver a speech next Thursday to outline Fiji's expectations for the negotiations in November. Ritika Pratap reports. His Excellency, Mr. Speaking to global media ahead of the May meeting in Bonn, Germany, Ambassador Nesat Shamim Khan said Fiji will be introducing the concept of Talanoa to its consultations with parties and other stakeholders. We're listening because at this point in time we don't know what the facilitative dialogue is going to look like because that depends on what the member states want and what the other stakeholders want. So um, this, is, this is a very important time for Fiji because this is a time in which we formulate what COP23 is going to deliver. Asked about the current political environment with U.S. still to make a decision on the Paris Agreement, Khan stressed Fiji believes in multilateralism. We believe that it's a process that works because it's inclusive and universal. So irrespective of the position of particular countries, I think it's very important that we continue to move this process forward. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change says they are mindful that many parties are facing financial challenges. Over the past few months, in meeting with governments and ministers, I have stressed that for the Climate Change Secretariat to provide the level of support that is required to address this enormous challenge, uh, we really need to get adequate resources. Ambassador Khan says Fiji's priority, as stated by the Prime Minister, is to build a grand coalition of governments, civil societies and the private sector to defend and uphold the Paris Agreement. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Ministry of Local Government and Housing has so far used $10 million under the government grant for first-time home buyers. This was revealed during the first Home Buyers Grant Forum presentation today. Anna Ravulo has more. Since the inception of the scheme in 2015, the Ministry of Local Government has been keeping tabs on the amount spent. Uh, the government has set aside $21 million, nearly, nearly $21 million, um, and my team advised me that uh, so far $10 million has been expended towards this product. And so uh, as a whole, if I'm going to be saying uh, 1000 then you can just multiply that uh, by $10,000, that's going to be what uh, is going to be expended over the next, uh, in the coming years. Wycliffe says that Fijians should now apply for such scheme as it only takes 24 days to process. The BSP Bank says they hope the forum will bring some changes to the policy that was implemented. From us, at the moment, we would like to see what the government has to offer. Uh, is there any change in the policy that they, they, they had before? And uh, we would like to, so from our side, uh, advise them on the delays and things like that we face, uh, the constraints that we face. Under the scheme, $10,000 is given to those who want to buy a piece of land and develop it, and $5,000 to those who want to buy a ready-made house. The forum also allows banks to bring up issues they face with applications. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The rate of high blood pressure in adults has increased from 24.2% to 31%, while tobacco consumption has decreased slightly from 17.5% to 16.6%. President Major General Ritai Chiochi Kondrote highlighted this during the closing of Primary Healthcare Symposium. Kondrote says recent statistics also show that the diabetes rate among Fijian adults has also decreased from 16.5% to 15.6%. We need to scale up our efforts to change lifestyles in our communities. We need to encourage our people to eat fresh and locally grown foods to reduce their tobacco consumption and control their alcohol and cover intake. We also need to encourage them to check their health status regularly for early detection and treatment of NCDs. A day of fun-filled music and a variety of entertainment has been promised for the Thurston Food and Music Festival. The Music Fest will be held at Suva's Thurston Garden on the 15th of July from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Event coordinator Elana Kaloni Singer says tickets will go on sale from the 21st of May at $20 for adults, while entry for kids under the age of 12 will be free. The tickets can be purchased at the FBC office and the Rock Market. The festival is being organized by FBC, Knox Entertainment and Suva. Suva City Council. A musician from New Zealand, namely Tiki Tani from Salmonella Dub. We're really looking forward to having him play alongside some of Fiji's best musicians. 
We have Nox, Tale and Nem, The Relative, Inside Out, uh, Seru Serevi, Tom Mui, Nasio Damoni, and Moana Loa. Later in sports, Jamie will tell us about the Super Rugby team's aim this season. But before that, Rachel is here with business. Thank you, Jacqueline. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Vodafone pays out massive dividends to its shareholders. And in growing Fiji, the Prime Minister's office inks million dollar grants. Stay with us. I'm another sort of a of Nayabu when you book level. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka. Love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, Vodafone Fiji today paid out a massive $40 million in dividends to its major shareholders, Fiji National Provident Fund and Amalgamated Telecom Holdings. Vodafone Chief Executive Pradeep Lal says despite competition, this was the biggest payout ever. Sharon Shivan reports. Since the 100% takeover of Vodafone Fiji by local shareholders three years ago, the company has paid $106 million as dividends to FNPF and ATH and also increased shareholder value from $390 million to $620 million. The company again had a phenomenal growth and our turnover has reached around $300 million. FNPF is the largest shareholder of Vodafone Fiji with a direct and indirect take of 86% equity interest in the business. When we did take the decision to uh, buy back the shares from uh, Vodafone, the OC shareholders, obviously it was a big risk at that stage and uh, not everybody supported uh, the FNP board in their decision. But uh, obviously I'm really grateful to Pradeep and his team obviously for making it a success. The benefits and the dividends that uh, the company makes uh, it, it goes back to the funds, it goes back to the members' funds when we declare the interest during the year. Without the strong performance of the ATH subsidiaries on our balance sheets, uh, we would never have been able to finance a lot of the work that we are doing today. Lal says the company continues to explore new boundaries to bring the next level of Vodafone innovation to all Fijians, as over the last three years more than $100 million has been injected in the expansion of Vodafone network coverage. Vodafone will be channeling a further investment of $36 million this year towards expanding the 4G plus coverage to over 80% of the populace. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Now with a glance at the world stock markets, here's Elizabeth from HFC Bank. Naka Rachel. In Britain, energy shares fell after British Prime Minister Theresa May vowed to control energy prices if she was re-elected in June. Japanese stocks edged down on Tuesday as the market ran out of steam after rallying to a 17-month high on Monday. The Nikkei share average lost 0.25%. In the U.S., most stocks fell as renewed selling in commodities from gold to crude sent material producers lower. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 lost 0.09% and the Dow Jones was down 0.12%, while technology shares boosted the Nasdaq Composite Index up 0.3 percent. Thanks for the update, Elizabeth. On to today's exchange rates. The Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan to close at 321, while it strengthened against the American dollar closing at 46 cents. Closer to home, the Australian dollar went up to close at 63 cents. The New Zealand and PNG Kina dropped closing at 66 cents and 129. On to the commodities market, a drop across the index as oil prices closed at 49.11 a barrel. Gold dropped by $9.40 an ounce to close at 1222 and silver followed suit closing at 1611 an ounce
In Growing Fiji tonight, grants worth more than a million dollars has been signed between three contractors and the Prime Minister's office. The contractors were allocated funds under the small grant scheme to construct project at Vuani Saki Primary School in Dakundrove, Ratu Felisi Memorial School in Nandranga and Navala Village in Ba. Three contractors, Chand Engineering Construction, Shankar and Sons and Building Friendly Construction will do the required work. The Permanent Secretary for the Prime Minister's office, Yogesh Karan, says this is an effort to uplift the standards of rural education. Uh, this was a request made by the school during Prime Minister's visit, uh, the, knowing the state of the school and the infrastructure. As you know that the uh, Office of the Prime Minister uh, is fully committed to deliver this project and Prime Minister's commitment to provide the best of resources to the schools in the rural sector uh, in, in the north. And that's a wrap from the business desk tonight. Now, Jamie joins you with the latest in sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up, Super Rugby's on a roll, but still cautious of challenges ahead. And Fiji Fact still on, barring any changes to the current weather conditions. This and more after the break. The Vodafone Fiji 7s team had a scrimmage session against France today as both teams round up preparations for the Paris tournament this weekend. It was the last chance for players to impress coach Gareth Weber before he names the final 13-member squad for the tournament. Apart from the field work, it was also time to socialize for the players, especially for F Fiji and French rugby rep Virimi Vakatawa who took time out for a special photo session with our national team. Meanwhile, France could be a force to be reckoned with at home with the inclusion of star player Vakatawa coupled with its home support. The tournament kicks off on Saturday at 8 p.m. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee will get a chance to test all his players in the five test matches coming up in June and July. McKee named a 36-member team yesterday to play matches against Australia, Scotland, Italy, Samoa and Tonga. He says the matches will give him a good platform to gauge where the players stand. Five test matches across the across the campaign. You know we we, we can't play all, all our top players in, in every single game, and and you know the the, the game against Australia is, is very important for us, as are the games against Italy and, and Scotland. You know every time we the flying Fijians go on on the field, you know they're striving to to win the matches. With two wins from two, the Super Rugby side has sent out an early warning to teams taking part in this year's Skipper Cup competition. The capital city side defeated defending champion Nanunga last weekend, but say they still have a tough road ahead of them before they can qualify for the elimination rounds. Rohit Deo has more from the Super Camp. Two down, another five teams to go in the round robin competition. So far, so good uh, in terms of our preparation, and uh, and uh, that is the plan uh, for our squad. Uh, that is to to start well. Uh, if we need to, 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 to win the competition, we need to start well. The Sayasi fully coached side isn't getting too carried away with the two wins so far. Uh, we had a good win against uh, Malolo and last week against Naro. But that doesn't say that, that you are in, the, in safe hands uh, to qualify for the semi-final. Because there, there, there are uh, uh, seven, uh, five more teams, uh, five more good teams uh, in front of us. Captain John Stewart says with only eight teams in the top tier, Every game is crucial. The uh, moral of the team uh, after two wins is high. And uh, the team knows that this year's competition is very tough compared to the previous years since there were only eight teams this year. Suva takes on Namosi in Navu at 3 p.m. this Saturday. 
In other matches this week, Nandi hosts Natesiri, Northland battles Nanronga while Malolo takes on Mazuata. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Fiji Football Association is keeping its options open for its first tournament of the year to be played at Ratu Dakambao Park from Friday. With the unfavorable weather condition, conditions hovering over the country, Fiji FA is expected to make a final decision by tomorrow afternoon. Vasil Prasad reports. Cool and calm with no signs of any cancellation of Fiji effect at Ratu Dakambao Park. Broadcast has always been saying the weather will be bad. As far as we are concerned, we are keeping the options open because uh, normally when there's a forecast, uh, normally the weather changes. So we are keeping our fingers crossed. The work at the venue continues normal and the pitch looks in tip-top condition for three-day tournament. The lightings are done. The, if you go and see the ground, ground I think it's the best in Fiji. Tournament sponsors Vodafone is also hopeful the games will continue this weekend. Uh, depending on the weather cycle, uh, the organizers of the tournament, Fiji Football, will obviously take a decision if they might have to postpone the uh, yeah, tournament. They have a lot of surprises in bag for fans and also for players. A lot of awards and uh, some of the, these are, uh, there will be obviously like always um, best player of the tournament, there will be the highest goal scorer and there's, recently we have added the new find of the tournament. If the weather permits, Fiji Fact Pool matches will be held from Friday to Sunday with the semi-finals and finals will be played next weekend at a venue to be confirmed. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Rio football side is pleased with its preparations for the Vodafone Fiji Fact. And while the team is laced with seasoned players, among them is a young footballer excited to fulfill a childhood dream and make his debut for the Delta Tigers. Vashnil Prasad reports. Surrounded by stars and national reps, young Mohammad Nazel is counting his days to make his first appearance for Rewa. I was small, I was like one to play in the main team. And I never believed that I'll be making to the, this team, but uh, some of my mentors are here too. And I'm pretty excited to play with them, even in this tournament. And I'm pretty sure they'll help me out in the tournament and I'll do good. While the DAV college student could make his dream come true, experienced defender Samuel Kautonga is ready to shine in his first tournament for Rewa. I uh, want to thank the real official giving me faith to be part of this team. And uh, yeah, the last uh, time I played for Real was uh, during Uli. Until uh, now, this is my first tournament, so I'm looking forward to it. Helping him and the Delta Tigers Fiji Fact campaign will be players like Amani Makoe, Savenada Nakalevu, Tayone Kerevanua, and Lori Mandau, to name a few. For coach Marika Rondu, this is the best prepared side for any tournament. We are at uh, some stage of. Uh, uh, good, good f fitness level. Uh, at the same time, uh, we focused on a lot of things, uh, and uh, we, I can say, we have uh, success in terms of uh, preparation. Ratu Dakambau Park has proven not to be a lucky ground for the host. They have hosted this tournament four times, but have failed to win any. The last one in 2011. History speaks for itself. Uh, in terms of Fiji fact, we've just won the tournament once, uh, run up once. The Delta Tigers take on Lautoka in its first pool match at 7.30 p.m. on Friday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. New board members for the Boxing Commission of Fiji have been appointed. The board of five will be led by Chair Mulutani Matai Tawakilai. The new board had to be appointed after the previous board stepped down earlier this year. Uh, we are here not only to bring uh, uh, changes to the box in the ring uh, of boxing, we are looking forward to, um, to support and uh, provide the capacity building for officials uh, and, and, and judges. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you with weather later on. And in our new media segment today, a new way of responding to internet trolls, and it involves cake. Join Jackie with the details after the break. Bola, <laughs>
Internet trolling is becoming a major concern these days. In a bid for internet trolls to eat their words, literally, Troll Cake, started by Catheck in Brooklyn, lets you send a cake to your internet troll. Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. The conditions we're having right now is great, sunny and cool, but unfortunately that is going to change as a cyclone alert is now in force for Fiji and nearby small islands. TCLA is continuing its journey and is currently heading this way at about 11 km per hour and is expected to bring damaging winds, heavy showers and thunderstorms, so keep a lookout on that. Taking a look in the west today, there were sunny spells but clouds crept in and left overcast skies. Eastwards from Pak Haba to Suva, it was mostly cloudy with few showers expected by later today. And up in Vanualevu, it was partly cloudy with brisk queens and there is an increasing chance of showers by later tonight. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 30 knots gusting to 40 knots with rough seas. And for the tides, the low tide will be at 12.35 a.m. with a high tide at 6.44 tomorrow morning. Sunrise will be at 6.23. For tomorrow, we are most likely to feel TCLS effects as the current forecast indicates heavy showers and squally thunderstorms for the Fiji group. Tomorrow's temps, Nandi and Lotoka will have moderate temps with highs of 32 and lows of 24. Looking further on to Friday, there is more rain and strong winds as per the forecast. And Jackie, we can only wish that TC Bella weekends or perhaps turns in another, another direction, sparing Fiji a lot of trouble. Back to you. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Impulse today, we asked, are you prepared for an off-season cyclone? I'm ready for the cyclone. Uh, yeah, I'm prepared. Uh, even though it's uh, off-season. Eh? I believe we at Merit are prepared for cyclone season. We've just opened one month down the line and we've uh, just gone through procedures and basically done training and anticipatory preparations. It's always because anything can happen in life. In the world of the weird and the wonderful in Rome, residents concerned about air quality may soon be able to use a smog tracker to monitor pollution levels as they travel around the city. A device is being tested that indicates which parts of the city have good or bad air quality. Recapping the main stories, Tropical Cyclone Alert is now in force for parts of Fiji. Former PWD staff sentenced for corruption charges and salvage of sunken southern Phoenix delayed. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, will Arambuka and Chaudhry coalition affect the NFP? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, tonight's shot of the day is courtesy of Doves Tamani, the sender's sister, Mela Valentine, enjoying the cool breeze at the Singatoka Sand Dunes. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. My name is Sant Kumar. We are Radio Fiji 2. And in Tawa, we are the best Radio Fiji 2. We are Radio Fiji 2. We are the best Radio Fiji 2. We are the best Radio Fiji 2. We are the best Bruce Rao. We are the best market vendor. We are Radio Fiji 2. We are the best 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 Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2, देश की धड़कन